I welcome the creation uh, of this group as another member of the family of non-partisan, non-whipped Senate parliamentary groups. It's a case of here's a new opportunity. There's obviously a need for a new group because one group had become really large and it's better to have balance within the, uh, the institution. A group of senators has formed a new caucus in the Red Chamber. They say their new group will be able to better represent regional interests. The group, in group includes some former Liberal, Conservative and Independent senators with some familiar names like Pamela Wallen in the mix. Its formation is just the latest in a series of changes to Senate affiliations following Justin Trudeau's decision to kick senators out of the Liberal caucus all the way back in 2014. So, how will this new team of senators make their voices heard in the upper chamber? Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with Scott Tannis, the interim leader of the Canadian Senate group. Senator, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Tell me, how is this going to work? You're a conservative senator. Does this mean you're no longer a conservative? You're out of that caucus. You're joining this new group. Yeah, you know, this is going to take a little bit of a, of a stretch for people to understand. But uh, this particular group, the Canadian Senators Group, is not forming uh, around political affiliations. Uh, there are center-right senators like me. There are center-left senators. Uh, I'm a conservative voter, I'm a conservative donor, I'm a member of the Conservative Party. Uh, others will be members of the Liberal Party and, and um, uh, supporters of, uh, of the Liberal government. What unites us is our approach to the work, our approach to the way in which we do our jobs as Senators in the Senate of Canada. And it's not about Justin Trudeau and it's not about Andrew Scheer, it's about the Senate and about the Senate of Canada and our role. And um, so that's, that's simply, uh, as we started having conversations, as I did and they spread to others, uh, that, was a, that was a tenet that we decided very early on. We wanted people of lots of different attitudes and uh, views and experiences, but we want to work together uh, to uh, garner meticulous, unbiased uh, research and good, solid, robust, open debate in the Senate chamber, not behind closed doors, and ultimately that we would come to our own decisions on legislation, and we would reflect our own positions in a transparent way to both the opposition and the, uh, uh, the government, so that as, as they need to keep score on how things are going, they can do that and understand whether uh, where they are in terms of levels of support and the need for amendments and so on. So presumably, so, though, if you're going to meet with this independent group of now 11 senators, you have to resign from the Conservative caucus. Am I understanding that correctly? You're, you're no longer yes. going to caucus with the Conservatives. So what, what did Andrew Scheer and the party leadership say to you when you told them that, or have you told them this? Look, um, first of all, nobody is allowed in, under the Senate rules to belong to more than one group. And so it is necessary for me to uncouple myself from the Conservative Senate caucus and to, uh, in order to, to uh, join and, and found the Canadian Senators Group. But I want to be clear that, you know, I, uh, I voted for Andrew Scheer, I worked on his, his leadership campaign and I'd vote for him tomorrow. He's a strong leader uh, and I'm a big admirer. It's not about Andrew Scheer, it's not about uh, Justin Trudeau, it's about how I and others believe we can best represent our regions and maximize our influence and therefore our contribution to both our, our respective regions and to Canada uh, through this group. So there are already 49 members of the independent senators group, so why a second independent group of senators? Why not just work within that existing structure? So, you know, one of the things that is a, is a tenet of our new group is a maximum size. And uh, we're 11 now. We have agreed that we will uh, uh, cap our group at 25. Uh, we think that an important part of independence is to do what you can do to minimize groupthink and also to uh, not control the Senate. We, uh, we firmly believe that we want to have an influence in the Senate, but we don't want to be calling the shots. And we think the more groups there are, the better, the better it is for debate in the Senate, the ultimately the better uh, decisions we'll make. Was partisanship getting in the way? I mean, you were a conservative and I know the Liberals were all kicked out by Trudeau a while back. I mean, was the partisanship, partisan nature of, of parties getting in the way? 
Look, I, it's all around the fact that as you look forward, not about backwards, as we look forward, um, the Senate is in the process of changing. Uh, that change was brought about um, by uh, Justin Trudeau and, uh, and his particular methodology of choosing senators. It was accelerated by the fact that Prime Minister Harper left a large number of vacancies. Uh, and it's now, I think, at a tipping point as a result of Justin Trudeau's uh, re-election, albeit in a minority. So to me, it's about looking at the new Senate. It's about understanding where we are in the country right now in terms of polarization of political views and uh, uh, around uh, views in the regions, uh, unrest in certain regions. And it's about us making sure that we up our game in the Senate to make sure we make the best possible decisions that we can. And we do it uh, with our job in mind, what the Founding Fathers had for us as our job, which was to look after our regions, make sure that our regions were, uh, were not being taken advantage of or disadvantaged in any way in the context of Canada. I wonder though, with the changes Prime Minister Trudeau has made and with the changes you and your group are making now, are, are the days of political parties in the Senate really coming to an end? You know, the Senate uh, has always been meant to be the long wave in political, uh, uh, in, in politics in Canada. And uh, there is a very strong partisan political caucus in the Conservative caucus that is determined to do what they will do uh, to hold the government to account and, uh, and uh, promote uh, uh, opposition to government bills. I don't see that going away anytime soon, but I do see an increasing number of people that are going to want to uh, take a step back, make their own decisions on how and, and why they are going to support or not support legislation and to act accordingly, and I'm one of them. You say this is largely driven, or part of the motivation here is to represent regional interests. There's been a lot of discussion about regional division after the last election. How concerned are you? I mean, you're in Calgary. How concerned are you about regionalism right now? I think if, if we don't do our jobs in Ottawa, if we allow ourselves to, uh, to, to um, go down narrow paths, uh, we do run a danger of, of uh, um, proliferating that kind of thinking. That's not good for Canada. But the, the fact of the matter is that the Senate was put in Parliament, uh, wisely I might say, by the Founding Fathers to make sure that all regions are treated fairly. Minorities are not trampled by a majority. And uh, that is something that is uppermost in my mind and in the minds of, uh, uh, I believe, of other members of the Canadian Senators Group. So mechanically, though, what, what can this group do to help calm some of that regional unrest and some of those regional issues that you're concerned about? I think we can, uh, we can be participants in uh, robust debate inside the chamber. We can make uh, clear and transparent individual decisions and, and transmit those to uh, who need to know. Uh, in order to manage legislation, and um, uh, you know, we intend to uh, uh, to undertake rigorous research uh, through our own independent research bureau that we will fund, and uh, will provide us with the facts that we need. In addition to whatever sales material we get from the government on a bill, and whatever end of day scenario we hear uh, from an opposition, though those are their jobs. Our job is to make good decisions and we'll do that with the help of, uh, of a solid research bureau that will be our own and will be fact-based. But you're not going to make decisions as a group, right? Like you're working together Absolutely and pooling not. together for resources, but no whips, no, no line votes. You're going to all vote your own conscience on your own issues. That's exactly right. There is, there is no uh, uh, opportunity or, or inclination, frankly, by those that have joined the group to somehow form a, a group position on legislation or on any political issue. Could this slow things down? I know things have gotten slower in the Senate with the changes. Do you think this could slow it down even further? I'm not sure, and I'm not, I'm not sure I agree with the, the characterization of uh, slowed down in the Senate. I, I, slower isn't necessarily I worse. I didn't mean to imply that, yeah, but just no, it takes no, no, longer, I, perhaps. I, I think, um, you know, I think that it will, uh, will, it will have to wait and see, but I don't think Canadians will be upset or impatient if they see good, solid, uh, straightforward debate and uh, sober second thought 
on, uh, on bills. If they see us doing their job, I think uh, they would say that uh, we should take the time we need. So this is the latest change in an institution that's gone through a lot of change over the last couple of years. In, in your estimation, Senator, is it working better now with a move towards more independence, accelerated by what you're doing today, or did it work better under the old partisan model? I, I, I came in at the end of the Harper era. I've been there for six years. Uh, I came in part, uh, as you know, I'm one of two uh, senators that found their way to the Senate by virtue of an election mm -hmm. that happened in Alberta. Uh, Senate reform was very much on the minds of the people that sent me to Ottawa. Uh, and uh, I view what is going on is different than what was there. And it was, to me, very, made very clear by Albertans, and in fact, uh, polls by Canadians, that what was there was not uh, being valued by Canadians. So I think it's a change. It's a change for the better. And uh, I'm determined to be a part of it. Okay. Senator Scott Tannis, thank you so much. You bet, Dave. So this afternoon, the head of the Conservative Caucus in the Senate responded to the move by some of his former members to form the new Canadian Senators Group. Senate Opposition Leader Larry Smith released a statement that reads, in part, In a country too often seen as a collection of dispersed and divided interests, it's important that people have the means to express their vision for the future of this great country in Parliament. Canada would be poorly served by diminishing the role of official opposition in the Senate chamber. We're back with the power panel. Kathleen Petty, Ginny Roth, Brad Levine, Yolan James, and John Paul Tasker. And JP, I want to start with you because you're our Senate reporter I in am. this bureau. Uh, we ha now have another independent Senate group. Yeah. Well, how, wh what's the significance of this? Well, it's very significant because the independent members of the independent Senators group want more independence. <laughs> 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 well, they're saying it's about the regions, <laughs> but really I think it's about politics because most of the members of this group are conservative-leaning politicians. They've either been mm -hmm. provincially Tory or they're federally Tory or they've been aligned with the Tories in the Senate. It's uh, Somehow they're all conservative-aligned. So they're getting a bit sick and tired, I would imagine, of being in the independent senators group, which is essentially a leftist progressive organization that is composed mostly of appointees from the prime minister, from this prime minister. And there isn't a whole lot of room for debate despite being independent. I think they got tired of being shut out of the conversation when they were raising issues around oil and gas, issues around pipelines, issues around a different approach to indigenous issues. And really there's no room in this independent senators group for that sort of debate. So they're striking out on their own, they're peeling away from the ISG, they're peeling away from the Conservative Party. This is really important though because it's really establishing the Trudeau changes to the Senate as a permanent form. This is really here to stay, it seems, at this point. Trudeau's appointed 50 of the current members of the chamber. There are 24 retirements to come. That's fully three quarters of the entire Senate. So if this is how it's going to proceed, I think some people are seeing the writing on the wall. Some conservatives are seeing that the partisan caucuses are likely not here to stay for very long. So they want to, you know, write their own story. They want to be able to have this separate group. They can still advance conservative principles. They can still advance right of center policy agendas separate from the ISG, separate from Andrew Scheer and the Conservative National Caucus. Okay, so but Kathleen, one of the goals they did talk about is easing some of the regional concerns that are happening in an election that has really magnified the regionalism, regionalism of the country. How effective, Kathleen, do you think this can be in dealing with some of the issues we're seeing where you are right now? Uh, I'm having a hard time sort of wrapping my head around this being the path forward. I mean, I can't help but sort of think, okay, if this uh, group had created itself a year ago, uh, what material difference would that have made, say, to Bill uh, C-48 or C-69? Right. Uh, JP may have a better answer for that, but I'm, I'm having trouble sort of seeing what the material Not difference much. <laughs> would be. I, I think, obviously, uh, two of the senators, uh, Senator Tannis being one of them, Senator Black being the other, were actually uh, elected in Alberta and then appointed. So they're, you know, our version of elected senators. And so I guess uh, certainly from this part of the country, we would expect them to represent uh, by virtue of that election, uh, the, the views, aspirations, priorities, and, and perhaps e even representing the grievances of this part of the country, one should expect that of them anyway. Uh, but, but how they work as a group and how it makes a material difference to how um, uh, regional priorities are discussed and, and then somehow advanced uh, in the Senate. Uh, uh, the jury's out on that one. I'm not quite sure. I I'm still feel a little bit like I'm trying to pin jello to a wall here. 
Yeah, Ginny, on that point on the, the JP made earlier about the, the changes that Justin Trudeau has brought into the Senate and what this now means, like, is the day of party-based politics in the Senate eroding? I'm glad you asked that because I agreed with so much of what JP said, except for when he said that this sort of solidifies Justin Trudeau's vision for the Senate. I think this is an indictment of Justin Trudeau's vision for the Senate. Justin Trudeau, you know, talked a lot about the independence of the Senate appointees that he appointed throughout his four years uh, as prime minister before the last election. And this is a total rebuke of what we all know as Senate watchers um, has been sort of a failed experiment, right? I mean, the, the idea that a prime minister will appoint people and that they'll truly be independent in the Senate, that was just never true. The These different sort of, the brinkmanship of the new caucuses has been interesting to watch, I guess, although I don't think the public has a lot of time for it. Uh, and what we've seen is that uh, senators are not interested in the sort of command and control model of Justin Trudeau's PMO, uh, which said that ultimately those independent senators would be reporting to him. So um, so that's first. And I, I'm really interested to see what this, what, what impact this has on the next parliament. If, if I'm a stakeholder who can't find uh, favor with uh, uh, with the Prime Minister's office or the people in Cabinet, I'm going to use this to my advantage. And we saw that with the No More Pipeline uh, bills uh, in C-48 and C-69, uh, that stakeholders were quite successful in doing that. So uh, I think we'll see more of that. Uh, and and I, I don't think the Senate will stay, stay the, the way it was uh, before, before the last election. So Yolande, how significant is this in terms of implementing the Trudeau changes? Is this meaningful or is this people Canadians don't know doing something Canadians won't see? Well, I mean, I would agree with the fact that it's kind of hard to wrap um, my head around exactly how this new entity or this new group is going to help them be more uh, effective with respect to um, trying to, to bridge the gap with Western alienation. But where I, I do tend to dis disagree is that I think that... Um, Though it's certainly the changes that the prime minister put in place in terms of the appointing of the independent senators has not been perfect, and you know we've seen Andre Pratt uh, uh, announce that he was stepping away from the Senate because he didn't think that it went fast enough. But I can think of uh, just two examples where the Senate, um, um, uh, these independent senators, openly. Um, um, uh, contested, uh, whether it's uh, um, assisted dying uh, bill uh, with respect to the uh, Carter um, resp response of the Carter judgment, as well as with cannabis. Um, so they certainly haven't just been towing the party line from the beginning of this process. Can it are we stepping towards even more independence? I tend to think so. My concern is, however they want to wrap it around or use it with whatever groups they want to do, is that they stay in their lane with respect to being a sober second thought, meaning mm. that they look at that, propose amendments, send it back to the House, but ultimately the elected body um, is the one that ultimately has to to uh, respond to the people and make the the the, the final the final shot. Um, but certainly, I am of the the belief that this has certainly been um, a continuation, um, if I can put it that way, of what was started with giving more autonomy or independence to the uh, appointed uh, senators. Brad, I know you guys wanted to roll up the red carpet when you ran a, an election or two ago. I mean, but do you think this is making the Senate less partisan, more effective, more independent, or is it just status quo? Well, it, it's, it's, I think it's more, more than that. I think it's actually kind of concerning that you can take a, a self-selected group of senators who have been appointed. In some cases, as Kathleen mentions, a, a couple of them have, have, have been elected. But by and large, these are, these are appointed individuals. The, the question then becomes, if they're going to be sitting as a new entity, uh, where is the accountability? To whom do they answer? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the challenge with Trudeau's vision the whole time. Now, you know, as a, as a Senate, uh, you know, uh, want to see the Senate abolished, uh, you know, at least under the party structure, you were, you know, uh, uh, there was a tangential uh, connection to the party and you took, uh, as, as, as bad as it was, at least you took direction from somebody who was accountable. Uh, now that's all gone under Trudeau's plan and now what you see, self-selected individuals this time around could be looking at this. Are they doing this because there's a minority parliament and the lower house uh, will have uh, less, perhaps less stability uh, than a majority uh, lower house? Unknown. But the bottom line is uh, this highlights the, the fundamental weakness of our system in that uh, self-selected uh, appointees 
still have a veto over, and as Yolanda says, they want to stay in their lane, but there's no guarantee that they will stay in their lane. If they're going to flex their muscle uh, and, and just kind of self-select who's in whose caucus, uh, we could see a ever-changing uh, configuration where right now they want to belong to this group, and then in a year from now, let's, let's reconfigure this and let's, uh, let's, let's have a new entity. It could breed instability in the upper house, but not per, more stability. But, Brad, on that point, is the muscle flexing more likely to happen when you're centrally directed by a caucus or more likely to happen when everyone's kind of their own boss? Whenever, well, when, 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 you're, when, you're, when you're doing what they're doing, uh, th they have made themselves probably more potent. We're talking about the Senate. We're, we, we, I'm all day on CBC Radio, we've got senators on the, on the radio talking. They're making themselves more uh, relevant, highlighting, uh, you know, some, I guess, some vacuum. It's fascinating that the, the, the PM is, uh, hasn't, hasn't been uh, out and about much. There's the vacuum before the House comes back, uh, and, the, and the, the Senate entity is, is taking that. What it'll look like is uh, it could be quite concerning. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. We'll see if that continues once we get a cabinet on November 20th and Parliament gets back in business. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.